Welcome to our life group once again. And we're going to continue in the book of John, chapter 3. And let's get uh, right into it. But let me uh, uh, refresh you of our last study. Uh, if you remember, Jesus had overturned the tables in the temple and uh, was very upset and ejected those, the people and the animals there and told them to not make God's house a house of merchandise. And then the Jews confronted him concerning uh, his actions. And Jesus responded concerning the building of the temple or the raising of the temple, which he's speaking about his resurrection, his death and resurrection. And in chapter 3, let's go to chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. The scripture says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, I had mentioned this before concerning the Pharisees, but I want you to understand that Pharisees were one of three Jewish sects or groups. The Pharisees believing in the resurrection of the body and the existence of spirits, that men are rewarded or punished in the future life according as they have lived, and that the souls of the wicked shall be detained forever in prison under the earth, while those of the virtuous rise and live again, removing into other bodies. Now, in Acts chapter 23, verse 8, Paul mentions this. He says this, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angels, they didn't believe in angels, nor spirits, they didn't believe in spirits. But the Pharisees confess both. Now, Paul was speaking and pleading his cause at a court where Pharisees and Sadducees were present and where they wanted him to be imprisoned and the Jews conspired to kill him. Now, uh, this Pharisee named Nicodemus, the scripture said he was a ruler of the Jews. Now, he was a member of the Sanhedrin, the highest Jewish assembly for government in the time of Jesus our Lord. And verse 2, he says, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, I hope you can see that uh, scripture in our screen because it's a little to the, to the right or to the left there. Uh, so I hope you can see the full, full scripture there. Now, uh, let me say this. He, he came by night uh, to escape observation or because the hour was convenient for him. I, we don't know, but it was by night. Maybe he feared uh, people watching him because he was a government official now. And he, he came to visit Jesus at night. And possibly he didn't want the people to uh, uh, see him or anybody see him uh, talking to Jesus. Or it was just convenient for him because he, he was a busy man during the day. And uh, a, a, a government official taking care of business with the uh, people all day, all day. Uh, and at night was his only time uh, to visit Jesus. And in this scripture, he said he called Jesus rabbi or teacher, master. It was a respectful term applied by the Jews to their spiritual instructors, which he, uh, Nicodemus, saw Jesus as a spiritual instructor, a rabbi. He says this in that scripture, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Now, we, uh, who is we, is the question. We probably was the Sanhedrin or the, the government, highest government assembly group uh, hearing about what Jesus was doing. And of course, I'll say that we was possibly in those times as well, everybody, everybody knew what Jesus was doing. The word got out. 
Now, uh, he's, uh, Nicodemus said that, uh, For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Now, Jesus was doing miracles upon miracles upon miracles. And if you're asking yourself, what miracles and what kind of miracles was Jesus doing? Well, in this study for John, we're going to list some of those miracles for you, and you can, and, and I'll give you the scriptures where uh, they can be found. Now, if you remember in John chapter 2, verse 9, Jesus spoke concerning the changing of wine. Let's read that verse. When the ruler of the feast tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Remember we studied that in the, past, in the last uh, chapter, chapter uh, 2? How he did that miracle? How Jesus told the servants to fill the water pots with water and they filled them to the brim. Then Jesus said, Take the water pots out to the ruler or the person in charge of the, of the feast, the marriage feast. As the ruler uh, got the water and placed it in his cup or poured it in his cup, that water was changed into wine. When they put the water in those water pots, the water didn't become wine at that time. It was water. So as they took it out and served it, the water became wine. And that was the miracle. That was the first miracle that Jesus had done. Now, uh, the ones who were present, Mary, his mother, all the guests, the, the, the uh, five disciples that were present, and all the people at the, at the wedding knew of this miracle or found, possibly found out of this miracle as they went on. But the servants, the scripture said that servants knew exactly what was got done when they actually poured the water into those water pots and it wasn't wine, it was water. And then when they extracted out the water to drink and serve to the people, it was wine. That was the miracle. Now, let's go to... Uh, Chapter 4 of John, verse 46 to 54. Jesus is beginning these miracles that Nicodemus was talking about. And let's read about what we have uh, concerning. This is the nobleman and his son. 446. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee. Remember where the wedding was? Cana of Galilee. Well, he's back visiting in Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Now, Capernaum from Cana of Galilee was 16 miles away. Verse 47, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him. Now, why do you think he went unto him? Remember, this man's noble man's son was sick. So his interest was getting a hold of the man who could do a miracle and heal his son. So he, he went after Jesus. He sought after Jesus. And he went unto him, he went unto Jesus, and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Now he asked Jesus if he could come down to Capernaum, 16 miles away, come down. And he besought him, he asked him, please come, please come, my son is very sick, come to go to Capernaum, where his son was sick. And verse 48, now he pleaded with, with the, uh, uh, Jesus. Then Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. 
Listen to what Jesus said. He says, he told this man, except you see a sign and some kind of wonder, you won't believe. But listen to the response of the nobleman. Verse 49. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down or my child will die. He's pleading for his son. He says, please come with me to Capernaum. Please. My son is going to die. Of course, this shows what concerning the nobleman. He loved his son. He loved his son. And he pleads with, Je with Jesus, please come down. Verse 50. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Simple words. Jesus didn't go to Capernaum, 16 miles away. He just said, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And listen what, what the nobleman does. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. That was faith. He accepted it. You know, as we read the Word of God and the promises made in Scripture by God, by Jesus, in the Word of God, if you could believe them as Jesus and God say it, that would be the belief for them. That's belief in the Word of God. And here he is, Jesus, saying, Go thy way, thy son liveth. This man receives that word and believes instantly. Instantly. And he went his way. Now, he was on his way where? He was going back to Capernaum. He believed what Jesus said. He said, thy son liveth. He starts on his way back to Capernaum. Verse 51. And as he was now going down, he was going down to Capernaum, his servants met him and told him saying thy son liveth <laughs> that's beautiful news that's wonderful news his son was about to die he pleads to jesus come to capernaum with me 16 miles away come my son is going to die and jesus told him hey you just uh, you just want to see a sign, you just want to see a wonder, and then you believe? But Jesus told him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Now the noble man didn't, didn't even uh, push Jesus or argue with Jesus and say, Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, you have to come down. You have to come and see my son and touch my son. He's going to die. But the word of Jesus, as soon as he said, Go thy way, thy son liveth, the man believed. Belief. Belief is what took and received this miracle and the word of God, the word of Jesus, for this miracle to be done. And here he goes. On his way home, his servants approach him. And they told him the good news. Thy son liveth. And verse 52, the nobleman inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. He asked the servants, when did my son begin to get better? When did he get healed? And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Now, remember, his servant said, yesterday so the man was already en route to go home after Jesus told him thy son liveth he immediately left to go home and it's the following day now he was traveling 16 miles by foot walking and his servants met him told him thy son sir, uh, thy, thy son liveth he asked his servant, what time did this happen? What time did my son uh, live? 
And they said, yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Now remember, what was causing his son to die? It was a fever at that time. A high fever was causing him to die. In verse 53, so the father knew that it was at the same hour, at the same time, in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. The exact same words at that time that Jesus said, he, 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 he knew, according as he talked to his servants, that Jesus had healed his son. And the scripture says, and himself believed. And not only did he himself believe, but his whole house. Now, why would his whole house believe? Because his son became healed. And this nobleman had told them what had happened concerning Jesus saying those words. And he believed. And of course, the servants who loved his son as well, hearing the story from the nobleman, they believed as well. Verse 54. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea and Galilee. And what was the first miracle? The first miracle was changing water into wine. The second, healing this nobleman's son from a high fever that was causing death to his son. Do we have people today with high fever in our time, in our modern age, and we have medications to take to help us with that fever, to lower the fever? Of course, we have doctors, hospitals, 911, emergency call. Well, in those days, they didn't. But this noble man knew where to go, and that was to seek Jesus and to ask him for help because his son was dying of high fever. You think that man was happy? Yes, he was. Happy that his son was living. Happy that his son was healed. And also because he found belief in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Where do you stand in your belief concerning healing in the Lord? Just by the word of Jesus, this man took it believed it, walked away, and can believe exactly what Jesus said, thy son is healed. And he received that word, and it was done. That's the second miracle. Let's go to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 9. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 9. And we read here, uh, concerning another miracle, the drought of fishes, the catching of the fishes or hauling in of fishes when they couldn't be caught. Let's read chapter 5. Now remember, these are the miracles that Nicodemus and all the government officials and all the city and all the people of that time were hearing about. Let's read chapter 5. Verse 1 to 9. And it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Now, the multitudes were hearing about Jesus, the miracles that he was doing, and they pressed on him. They, 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 they gathered in, in, in large groups, multitudes, and they pressed uh, upon him to hear the word of God. They wanted to hear what Jesus was saying concerning the word of God. 
he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships, verse 2, stand, saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, Simon Peter, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. He told Peter, let's take the ship out just a little, a little further from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, he got a good staging, in other words, where the people could see him and also where they could hear him. So they witnessed Jesus on the ship. He was teaching. Verse 4, And when he had left speaking, he had finished speaking and teaching the people the word of God. He said unto Simon, Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. The drought meaning let down your nets so we can catch or haul in fish. And Simon uh, answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Listen what Simon Peter says. They've been working, these fishermen, trying to catch fish all night. And they didn't catch a thing, not one fish. Then Simon says, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now listen to Simon. He says, I'll, I'll listen. I'll, I'll, I'll do it, what you said. No, nevertheless, I'll listen to your word. I'll do it. I mean, we, we, we worked hard all night and we didn't catch a thing, but by your word, I'll do it. Verse 6, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. Just by listening to the Word of God. Just by believing in the Word of God. When you read the Word of God, I pray that you believe what you read, accept it, in your heart and watch miracle change in your life as you read and study the Word of God. It makes a difference when you read the Word of God and you study the Word of God and place it in your heart and your mind and believe what you read, things happen. The Word of God is powerful. It's life. The Word of God is eternal life if you read it and study it. Verse two of uh, 7, And they beckoned unto their partners. Simon had to call his friends, his partners, which were in the other ship, another ship next door, that they should come and help them. There was a multitude of fish. They needed help to get this catch in. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. <laughs> That's a lot of fish. That is a lot of fish where the boats begin to sink. Hey, when you listen to the word of God, when you listen to the words of Jesus, there's blessing that come will come along and it will be multiplied if you obey. If you disobey, different story. But if you obey, there's blessing and multi mul multiple blessings that come because of your obedience. Verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. His humility toward Jesus 
knowing that he knew himself, and he said it, I'm a sinful man, O Lord, depart from me. Verse 9, for he was astonished, Simon was astonished, and all that were with him, all the workers, right, the, the fishermen that were with him, at the drought or the catch or the haul of fishes which they had taken. Now that was a miracle. That was a miracle. They worked all night, nothing to be caught. They were fishermen, nothing to be caught. And here, by the word of Jesus, let your nets down for a drought. Let your nets down for a catch. Jesus already knew that they, that they toiled all night and didn't catch anything. Jesus knew this. And that's why he told them, cast the nets over. Let's catch fish. You guys been working all night, didn't catch a thing? But listen to what I have to say. Just do it. And they'll catch fish. And it was done. Man, and two boats filled to the, to the limit. And they were sinking with a catch. That was a miracle right before him. They were astonished. They were they, they, baffled in their minds. Wow, just by, he, just by our Lord just telling us and we obeyed and it was done. That was a miracle. Let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 23 to 28. Now we're reading about the miracles. The reason I, I want to bring these miracles up is because, or the uh, history of these miracles that Jesus was doing, is because Nicodemus had mentioned that uh, he, they knew, the government knew, the officials, all the people, they knew that he was a man of God. But uh, because of all the miracles that he was doing, and I wanted to bring you uh, fact in scripture of how uh, these miracles or what miracles were were done uh, and there were plenty of plenty of miracles to be done one miracle after another miracle after another were being completed uh, John chapter I mean Mark chapter uh, 1 verse 23 and it reads and there was in the synagogue a man now, the synagogue was a Jewish place of worship and before we get there, we'll continue this story next week with this miracle of the demon in the synagogue. Thank you for joining me, and we want to continue next week with the miracles of Jesus, what Nicodemus was talking about. And I pray to God that this week a miracle will happen in your life as you read the Word of God and study the Word of God and pray that a miracle will happen in your life, whatever it is, healing, any kind of sickness, believe in Jesus. He can do it. And one great miracle that can happen as well if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's a miracle in itself. No man can change anyone except Jesus. And if you believe in Him, accept Him as your personal Savior, ask Christ to forgive you for your sins, He can come in and change your life. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time in our life group. God bless.